Welcome to New Realities. My name is Alan Steinfeld, and I would say one of the warriors of consciousness that are, is on the planet this time is my guest tonight, David Ike. He's one of the people I feel who are setting the bar and understanding this new reality that we're coming into. I just saw him give an 11 hour lecture yesterday, connecting the dots from conspiracies to ETs to banking fraud to protests and he pulls it together from a very spiritual level and gives us a perspective of how to move forward as truly multi-dimensional beings. And I feel when the, when the true history of consciousness is written, your name will be a part of that because you're bringing truth and clarity. And what I liked about your talk, because I, I put you in the box of conspiracy, you right. offered spiritual solutions. And that's what I, I think we can focus on a little bit right. today is like, okay, there are conspiracies. There's definitely suppression of information. Now, what do we do to get out of this um, trap, the box that we're in? You know? Well, for me, uh, it's a simple thing. I call it becoming conscious. I make the very uh, clear distinction be between what I call mind-body, which is basically that level that experiences through the five senses, and consciousness, which is the greater multidimensional infinite self. It's the kind of level of self that near-death experiences are uh, experiencing when they leave the body. The body's like a lens, and it focuses attention. Um, but if you have uh, mind-body to interact with this reality, that's in this world, if you like, but your whole point of perception is not totally of this world because you're being influenced by higher levels of awareness, which are giving you an intuitive uh, and, and greater picture of self and, and world events. Then you, you, you have the best of, of both. You have the ability to interact with this world, but you've also got the bigger picture coming through intuitively and all the rest of it. If you get isolated only in mind-body, as I call it, only in five, the five senses, so basically there's nothing that you, you are influenced by except what, what your senses are receiving in terms of information, then you are, uh, you are operating on a tiny, tiny fraction of your infinite possibility. And when you are disconnected from an influence of your real consciousness, then there's one place to look to get a fix on who you are, where you are, and world events, and that's this way. Mm. And if that information flow through the education system, as we bravely call it, and through the mainstream media, et cetera, um, uh, is, is, is your only um, source of getting a fix on you and the self in the world, then you're going to get a distorted, limited uh, uh, picture of yourself and world events because the cabal that I've been exposing for the best part of two decades, in fact more than that, control the flow of information. They dictate what is um, uh, taught in, in, this, in the schools and universities, they dictate what comes through the mainstream media, and therefore the whole uh, kind of foundation of human control is disconnect them from an influence of consciousness, isolate their attention in the five senses, and then program that isolated level with a version of self in the world that suits your uh, agenda for global control. Right, so that, in a way, is, I feel the biggest conspiracy, the fact that we are these multidimensional beings aware of these senses, yeah. and then we're told to focus just on this and ignore the, the intuition that comes to us, and if we don't ignore it, then we're crazy. Yeah. And society labels us insane and puts us away. It's a simple thing, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to manipulate and suppress and enslave billions of people, yeah. um, you cannot have them in um, expanded conscious awareness, because mm -hmm. you can't do it. They'd, yeah. they'd see through it immediately, and, 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 and consciousness in its true sense would never uh, stand for being enslaved. Um, so you have to put them in a, in a, in a, in a tiny bubble of uh, reality that sees themselves as little me, I have no power, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, th and that's what they, they've done, and it's done systematically. Simple thing, you see, when, when I got into this, Alan, it was, I was a journalist and I was a television presenter with the BBC. And then I had some amazing, what you might call spiritual experiences, paranormal experiences. They're not paranormal, but they are from the, you know, the right. normal view of the world. 
And I started to realize that there were other explanations for life, the universe, uh, everything. And, and they were compelling mm. explanations. And my question, being a journalist, was why aren't these taught in the schools? Why don't we see this in the media? What's going on? And that made me realize there was a conspiracy to suppress this information and emphasize two polarities, which should actually be one, but two polarities in the way that they are, are, are uh, uh, expressed in our society. One is religion mm. and the other one is, is science. Mm -hmm. And we see religion as, and science as opposite sides when true spirituality and true science are actually the same thing, exactly. but they pull them into a, into a polarity. Now, here's a simple question that I, uh, I ask myself. Um, we have, I've traveled the world a lot, I see them. We have thousands and thousands of television channels all over the world, endless thousands and thousands of newspapers and radio stations. Apart from those that specialize in it because they're, they're, they're presented by people who are interested in the information, how many times do you ever see anywhere in the world television documentaries asking anything about the nature of reality? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't see them. Well, that's why I call this show New Realities. And of course, the inquisition of religion has blocked people from this expanded view. So, But what's happening now, yeah, they put 7 million people in a box, but like you've said and other people on the show, there's, there's a shift in vibration where the box is ripping at the seams and they can no longer contain the consciousness that, that you've experienced firsthand. Well, um, what happened to me, Alan, is that in uh, 1990, uh, I went to see a psychic because for the previous year, mm -hmm. when I was in a room alone, I was a journalist and I was a national spokesman with the British Green Party, but when I was in a room alone, I f it felt like I wasn't alone. And by March 1990, this has become so tangible that, um, long story, I, I went to see the psychic. Um, and this stuff started coming through. I I'm presenting the sport and the news to the BBC, and this psychic suddenly telling me that I'm going to on a world stage to reveal great secrets and, 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 and all the rest of it. But one of the th key things that I was told right back at the start was that there was a vibrate through this through this psychic, there was a vibrational change coming, i.e., an information change, a consciousness change, that was going to um, act like a spiritual alarm clock. It was going to wake people up from what it described as their amnesia, their coma, because basically humanity collectively is in a hypnotic state. And when, when you heard that, did you think it was, oh, crazy, that's ridiculous, or when... Well, I, I'm the kind of person, Alan, that never dismisses anything, but uh -huh. never takes anything on face value mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, and therefore, you know, I, what I do is I put it on the back burner, as I call it, and I'll, I'll see, see what happens. But you know, you, I mean, you, you'll have felt it, so many people yeah. watching this program will have felt it, that you, you, you hear something, and this might go, mm, but this goes, yes, 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 and something like that was going. I thought you know, I've got to go with this. And, and not only did I go with it, I left the BBC and went out on this bloody a journey on the basis of, yes, I feel to go with this. And, and at, at, at the time, obviously, there was no evidence that this awakening was happening. Uh, there was certainly no evidence that something else that came through the psychic at that time was that um, this energetic change what, which I, I call the truth vibrations, was going to bring to the surface all that had been hidden from humanity. There's no, 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 no uh, evidence of that at all. But uh, two decades later, when I look uh, at this, this period, it's unbelievable what's happening now. People are waking up, uh, and literally, what, what do we say? We say, people say, I woke up. Yes, from the trance uh, that, that we've been held in. Um, and, you know, when you look at a hypnotist stage show, and I went to many as researching one particular book, they are implanting what? Belief systems and implanting senses of reality into the brain mind, which then decodes reality to fit the implanted belief. Thus, they'll see someone naked in the audience or an elephant in the audience when they're not really there. And what do you do? You snap your fingers and they wake up and suddenly you're not seeing the elephant in the, in the audience anymore. And, and so when you wake up from the trance, you, you, the way that you perceive reality is transformed. And people go, 
Why couldn't I see it before? It's so obvious because you were in the trance before. Mm. And, and so what we are um, uh, looking at is, is this a mass um, sleeping beauty waking up called humanity from, from, from the, the spell that has been cast upon us. Because the vibration, can no, the vibration we're moving to can no longer um, support the... What your thesis is, and is that there's a government, and then there's the shadow government that controls the right. government, and then behind the shadow government in the suits, and then behind them is the alien reptilian consciousness that feeds off the dramas of the human civilization. It feeds off low vibrational human emotion, which is why society is structured to, to, to produce maximum low vibrational human emotion. Mm -hmm. But as I keep emphasizing, this is why I'm ne I use the word spiritual. Mm -hmm. I never talk about the conspiracy without talking about the spiritual and the mm -hmm. nature of reality because they are fundamentally connected. You cannot control seven billion people physically. You can do it in a small area, but you can't do it globally. You have to manipulate people, the target population, to see self, little me, I have no power, and the world and world events in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Thus, this global conspiracy at its foundation is a mind game. Mm -hmm. It's about the manipulation of humanity's sense of self and reality. And this is why this control system is terrified of this awakening that's happening as people start to break out of the trance that they're put in from cradle to grave by the constant bombardment of information that's programming a certain reality. This is why the uh, suppression of real science and this, the funding of mainstream science is directed um, uh, to make sure that mainstream science, which of course dominates the media version of mm -hmm. science and reality, um, never actually connects the dots yeah. so that we see that everything is one, so we see that we are actually infinite consciousness having an experience rather than being the experience. Mm -hmm. The self-identity with the experience, like I am David Icke or I am Ethel Jones that works down the store, that self-identity will always pull you into a sense of I can't, limitation, little me. Whereas when we then realize, which is what science is, 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 is funded and structured to suppress, when we realize that actually we are consciousness having the experience, we're not actually the experience, then suddenly your, your, your sense of self moves from little me to infinite me. And therefore, your ability to be manipulated becomes dramatically less. But what do these, let's call them reptilian beings, really want? So they suppress humanity, they, 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 they feed off their drama and the emotions, but what does that get them ultimately? What's the big picture even behind that level of reality? Their state of being, for many, many reasons, not least you know, their own um, mm. attitudes and their own sense of reality, is resonating to what is uh, low vibrational human emotion. All these things that, that uh, come from the, the base uh, foundation called fear. Mm. I mean, guilt, anxiety, um, uh, regret, anger, frustration, depression, all these things. And so the more that they can get humanity to um, generate this energy by the way world events un, uh, are manipulated, the more energy sustenance they have um, because they, they, there seems to be a, a modus operandi with mm. this group where they target uh, a society and they create massive, uh, because of their advanced technology, they create massive upheavals, yeah. geological upheavals, earthquakes, volcanoes and, and, and tidal waves, all the things that the ancients talked about happening. Um, and what that does is basically destroy the society that mm. they're targeting. Then they, again, this is, this is in the, the records of, of ancient accounts all over the world, they then manipulate the target population genetically. Mm. And they tune them in to certain frequency bands which basically relate to the collective hive mind of this reptilian group. Mm. Because, you know, the more I understand about this reptilian structure of society, it's very much akin in uh, principle to an ant colony. Mm. 
mm. where you have you have the, the the queen ant, which is basically sending out the instructions in various ways, uh, chemically and vibrationally, and the worker ants are picking this up and they're just following the, the you know the program, and and you know I, I talk about this in detail in my books, but um, we are being subjected and have done for been for eons to a a broadcast transmission that, that doesn't make it sound as advanced as it really is, mm -hmm. but in principle, a broadcast transmission, which we are tuned to, mm -hmm. uh, and our DNA, which is a receiver transmitter system, is picking up, and thus we are uh, experiencing a contracted fake reality compared with the expansion of mm -hmm. reality that we should be experiencing. And in principle, and in many ways in detail, the Matrix movie series mm -hmm. was spot on right. in the way that we are decoding this fake reality, believing it to be real. But maybe what you also said at the end of your 11, 12 hour lecture was that, you know, we gaining our freedom and freedom has value because we had to press and fight for it. If it was just here, we wouldn't appreciate it. So this big obstruction in the way and the suppression is making the the coming alive, the awakening of humanity even more powerful because we fought for it and we've gone through the obstacles that have been in the way to achieve it. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you can look at any situation mm. and it's multi-levels uh, of uh, ways of observing it. You can look in it here, it looks a certain way. It looks at it there, it looks a certain way. And, and, and that can look different and that can look different to, to each other, but it's not a paradox. It's not, it's, it's actually the point of observation. So you can look at this from a this world reality and you can see it as uh, a, a human race being suppressed by an external force. And then you can look at it from another angle and it's a massive, on one level, collective learning experience, exactly. if you like, yeah. because what it is showing humanity uh, and that consciousness which experiences the, uh, humanity the consequences of giving your power away. Mm -hmm. The consequences actually of saying you do it, you're responsible for it. I mean, no one defends politicians less than me. <laughs> um, but, you know, the act of what are they going to do about it, what are they going to do about it, instead of what am I going to do about it, is a process of giving your power away. If you don't want politicians to have power over your lives, then stop giving your power to them by saying, what are you going to do about it? And, and, and there's, there's this uh, negation of responsibility where people don't want to be responsible for the world. They don't want to even be responsible for their own lives. They want someone else to blame because then they can uh, hide the fact that they're actually responsible for what's happening to them. And again, there's no greater way of putting your power away or giving your power away than saying it's your fault I'm in this state. Yeah, we can even blame the reptilians, but if we, I mean, yeah. and of course there, it's part of that mind yeah. feed, but what you're saying is, the way is forward is to come back home to yourself and, and say yeah. that I am a, 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 a joyful being that's here to experience my ultimate consciousness. Yes, and also, um, you know, things are now getting really challenging mm. and um, really difficult and people are, are having very, very unpleasant experiences as a result of the world situation. But there's another, again, you can look at it like that and that's accurate, mm -hmm. but you look at it in another way and you say, if it wasn't happening, if it was just toddling along and everything was kind of just about all right, then there wouldn't be this awakening. Exactly. There wouldn't be this, uh, these people standing up in Occupy protests and saying, I can see the situation now. I'm a slave. I'm not having it. That wouldn't be happening. Mm. So it, it, you know, these um, uh, challenges are also gifts. You know, I, I've said many times, related to my own life, never mind the principle in general, that life it tends to give you your greatest gifts brilliantly disguised as your worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened in my life. And I look back at where I am now, and I wouldn't say I enjoyed many of the <laughs> unpleasant things that happened to me and challenging things that happened to me, but I'm glad they did mm -hmm. because I wouldn't be what I'm doing now, wouldn't know what I know now without those challenges. So mm -hmm. we, we should be, you know, when we see, when we have challenge, it's the understanding that we're infinite consciousness. This is just one dotted infinity. Let's deal with it 
and then move on instead of letting the challenge overwhelm us. You know, the interesting thing you said about uh, this, this race that's controlling is that they use symbols a lot. Yeah. And I think we can learn from that because symbols are not just these pretty pictures. They impact consciousness in ways of manipulating our reality. And that's what they do for these beings in control. They're reminding, I think, them, like, you know, all the great, uh, all the cast companies have these spiritual symbols. Shell, the chevron. These are allusions to the body and spirit being one and separate at the same time. So they're, they're playing with spiritual realities, but reinforcing their own agenda with Yeah, they're, they're, they're playing with manipulating people's yeah. perception of reality. Yeah. Because, um, you know, we have become obsessed with communication through words. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what I say in my books and my talks is that this universe that we're experiencing has many levels, but they're all expressions of a base level, which is a vibrational information construct. And we, we come through the electrical, like the, the ear will take vibrational information that will turn into electrical information that goes to the, the brain and the decoding system of the body and even the hearts should be massively involved in that. And it moves into, a, into digital and holographic reality, which is what this is. So everything comes back to the base vibrational construct. So a word that is written, that we see in holographic reality, in its base state, that word is a vibrational field. Um, and, and it is affecting people vibrationally. You know when you, 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 um, you read a book, mm -hmm. you, in the holographic realm, you are seeing words and it's going through the decoding system of the eyes. But that book is a vibrational information field. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, commuting, so symbols, yeah. it's in communicating with you as a whole while you're holding it and reading it in parts. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the same principle of a symbol and the cabal that I'm exposing that, that understands these esoteric, uh, what, what some people call occult hidden principles, and they want to re them to remain hidden so we don't understand how we're being manipulated. Mm -hmm. We see a symbol um, of, of whatever it is. In holographic reality, we see a symbol on a transnational corporation logo. Those symbols, if you bring them back to their base state, are... Um, information fields mm -hmm. and thus we we'll look at a symbol but what we're interacting with on a deeper vibrational level is an information field and it's affecting us yeah. these people don't put symbols uh, of particular types all over society for no reason they do it because it's impacting upon us subliminally without us even realizing it like i say communication is not through words alone in fact the major communication is not through words it's by vibrational energetic exchange and they can uh, hack into that system by putting symbols all around us yeah. it's like what's going on is a holographic movie in our head which we are decoding mm -hmm. and thus the way we decode reality from this information field dictates what our so-called physical holographic experience is. And the way we decode reality dict is dictated by our sense of reality. And in the same way that you can hypnotize people to decode reality in a certain way, you know, like there's an elephant in the audience, you can be, de you can be uh, hypnotized through uh, media, education, and basically the sources of information in this world to read reality in a certain way. And that's what we're doing. And that's what's happened. And which is why when people open their mind to consciousness and go into deeper levels of self, they perceive reality and experience reality in a much more expanded way mm -hmm. because they're now interacting with the energetic field of the universe in a, in a completely different way and a more expanded way and thus their perception of everything is expanded including of self. So when you're up there on stage for 11 hours you're also kind of beaming in energy. You're transmitting what I feel these beings have given you. That's an interesting point because you know over the years um, psychics, visual psychics have been in the audience and they've seen this happening, this, this energy coming to the top of my head and going out. Mm -hmm. And, it, it, you know, we talked earlier about you, you, can, you can read a book mm -hmm. or you can hold the book and get the totality right. of the information. I realized, Alan, a long time ago that the most important communication between me and the audience at these events is energetic. Mm -hmm. And more than that, the most important reason for them is that 
massive build-up of energy with the audience massively participating as we become one unit mm -hmm. that over the hours it builds up and it is sending out massive uh, high vibrational um, energy information into the into the energy field which can then be picked up by anyone that kind of interacts with it and and you know um, that's what they're doing that's what Satanists are doing I mean they say it in their own writings they are in Impacting upon the energy field, the energy sea in which we live and, and, and interact, low vibrational uh, fields to bring it down vibrationally and make it right. come into density. And we're bringing it Yeah, up. exactly. What's happening with these events and what other people are doing in their own way around the world is that they are impacting upon this, this energy field and they're raising its vibration. And interestingly, organizations like in America, the HeartMap Institute, mm. talk about the fact that love, appreciation, and, and these uh, emotions, um, they are 5,000 times, uh, they say, more electromagnetically powerful yeah. than, than, than hatred and these other low vibrational emotions. So, you know, we can do so much and reverse so much of what's been done to the, the, the morphic field that we interact with. Uh, by, 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 by doing these events and by what other people do and around the world. by sending love and joy. Yeah. And, and I mean, the thing is, you know, people are watching this program. Yeah. People listen to a radio station where someone's talking about this stuff. But that's not the only way that broadcast is communicating because it's going out mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a broadcast and it's going out into the ether and it's being picked up by people who've probably never heard of the radio station that they're being influenced by. Because they, when we talk in the media, um, the, we are giving out information fields. Right. And thus, um, anyone that can talk about this in any way, shape, or form is adding to this uh, transformation of the, 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 the human energy sea, mm. um, which is um, so important to, 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 to lifting the, the density and allowing us to go into other levels of reality. Mm -hmm. You know, the people get worked up over fear, but if that's all they hear you say, which is what I heard you say when I first met you, because I didn't know anything about you, and then there's this other thing that you lift them out of that, their own stuff that they're projecting onto you, yeah. and you give them a solution. That's the power of your message. Well, it's very kind of you. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure, Alan. Yes, thanks Thank again. You. Alan Steinfeld for New Realities, talking to David Icke. Uh, website, David Icke. Uh, DavidIcke.com. There you go. Please check out his books, his programs, his YouTube, and look for him when he comes back.